Have you ever noticed someone who just looks very different? Maybe it's a noticeable scar or a strange hair color. If they are just really out of place or odd. Worse yet, have you ever paid attention to the proclamation of some authoritative expert that a particular physical attribute is a true sign of beauty? Then looked into the mirror to see if you possess it. <laughs> or worse, done the mirror check to look for what someone else has told you was unattractive. She must have been amazing. There is an odd thing about what is considered attractive about a person and what is not. That consideration has changed dramatically over the years and is constantly changing now. For example, when King David was struck by the beauty of Bathsheba, he pursued her and he got himself into some serious trouble. What was so amazing about her? Well, you tell me. Scholars say she was probably a physically solid female with a thick waist and strong arms and legs and plenty of hair all over. No beard or mustache or anything. But the hair removal we find common in order to fit into society now? Well, not really a consideration back then. But. Regardless of any of that, I'm sure she must have been amazing. It's easy to see that how beauty is defined today is not only not the same as in the past, but is right now the subject of multiple differing opinions. And as this little rant concludes, you will see for yourself positive proof that for the most part, what you look like really only matters if you think it does. A danger. Our society has moved to a point where folks are constantly comparing themselves to the standard that they are convinced represents real beauty and attractiveness, and finding themselves unable to measure up to that ideal. So, needlessly, they opt for surgery or spend huge amounts of time and effort and money trying to get that look. Today, this unreasonable concern that we might be unattractive causes serious issues for our mental well-being by convincing people they are ugly or that everyone thinks they are ugly, not worthy or alone because of how they look. It is so bad that some see no other way out but then to take their own lot. Whether we like it or not, we can be convinced by the media, by others, by friends, by social media contacts, and even family, that our physique, our complexion, hair color, manner of dress, and a whole bunch of other factors that we may or may not have any power to change is either a huge asset or a gigantic indication of ugly that will ruin us subject us to ridicule that cannot be overcome. And anyone with half a brain and a tiny bit of common sense knows it's all poppycock. But let's take a look at something more than just my opinion. Let's see if science, using the scientific method, has any real proven light to shed on this subject. Not just opinion. In the mid-1980s, Robert Kleck, along with several others, performed a tightly controlled and truly revealing experiment. If you want to find documentation of those results, they were printed in the Journal of Social and Clinical Psychology in 1985, Volume 3, Issue 3, entitled Gender and Responses to Disfigurement in Self and Others. Here is the simple gist of how it went. The documentation in the experiment shows that there were 27 men and 21 women involved. Each participant was placed into a room with no mirrors. They were informed that they were going to help learn how people behave towards others with facial scars. While in this mirrorless room, an obvious scar 
was made up and placed on the face of the participant by a makeup artist. After the scar was in place, a small mirror was used to allow the participant to see what the scar looked like. Then, just before going out into the building, the makeup artist, with the excuse that they needed to moisten and freshen the scar, quickly removed it, without the subject knowing that now they looked exactly the same as when they walked in the room. But the participants with the non-existent scar were invited to mingle and interact with the people in the building. And no one else in the building was aware that this experiment was going on, and that the participant thought they had an ugly scar. The one they saw in the mirror in the tiny room on their face. Revealing results. After a period of time, the participant was brought back into the little room where the experiment began, still unaware that there was no scar. When asked how people responded to them, the participants stated that people would avoid being near them and would not return their gaze or make eye contact. And if someone did make eye contact, the participants felt the person was staring at the scar and that when they looked away, they were avoiding looking at the scar. The participants had been treated as they expected they would be. They found it difficult to engage with anyone and felt that they were avoided and ignored. The reactions and impressions expressed by the participants didn't vary much regardless of their gender. Can you imagine the shock when they found out there was no scar? What will you choose to believe? So, here's the else. If we choose to believe that some aspect of our appearance is bad, negative, ugly, or makes us less than others, we tend to expect and assume that the way people treat us, when it is not as positive as we might have hoped, is a negative interaction because of that imperfection, that flaw, that ugly, that we or someone else has convinced us we have. I'm not saying that if there is something out of the ordinary it is not noticed, but instead that if we feel our uniqueness is bad, we will see that we are treated differently, even when we're not. When you are convinced there is a prejudice or a negative perception of you because of something you believe is not good about you, or that someone else is perceiving is bad about you, your brain and sometimes your emotions will see that as reality, even when it most assuredly is not. Never let anyone determine your great beauty and value by their flawed perception of what is good, because it then becomes your flawed perception, and then your reality. You deserve and can experience something better. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Well, you've watched this whole episode. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe, make a comment, share it with others. It helps us out. Thank you.